Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Price and I'm here with my teammates, Matt and Ryan, and we decided to analyze Hilton International. So we decided to do a SWOT analysis for Hilton. For strengths, Hilton is one of the best at international expansion and just expansion in hotels. However, on our weaknesses, our stock price is kind of not looking too good as of right now. And we are very dependent on minimum wage employment, which will lead us into one major threat. Strategic drivers, we have six of them. Uh, our first one is the coronavirus, kind of like how Ryan was mentioning earlier, but this displays the global pandemic and how it affects um, this year's revenue specifically. And also the minimum wage is an important factor of the Hilton's total expenses. If Hilton was provided a bailout option from the government, this driver shows its effect on debt and equity. Airbnb and VRBO, um, this one was one of the drivers that I thought was very interesting because these are two companies that aren't necessarily hotel companies, but they affect Hilton's market share. Some of our key performance indicators that we're really looking at is our EBITDA, which you know is just our earnings before all this interest, tax, and depreciation. Our quick ratio, that's mainly going to be used for like seeing how the bailout would work with us. We want to keep that at a certain ratio and we want to see which bailout method would be best for us. Forecasted equity per share. To start with our model, we tried to model the key performance indicators along with the individual drivers. You'll be able to see how not only each individual key performance indicator is uh, impacted by the interactive dashboard, but you'll be able to see Hilton plan in place. But the importance of the model is to show the impact of uh, current events such as uh, the coronavirus, bailouts, and also the other important drivers. And we'll be able to see that through the model. As you can see, it's interactive. To start out, I want to talk about this year. It's about 2021, so the first year of our forecast. The three things that directly affect this would be our the impact of the coronavirus on our, um, on our revenues due to people not being able to even go to our hotels, those being shut down. And with that, we're expecting a government bailout of about $10 billion, and we want to be able to show the, the impact of whether it would be debt or equity, how that would impact our ability to pay off current and uh, future debt, and then also the impact of the 2020 election on uh, not only this year, but future years. So if I want to show you first, let's say we lose about 50% of our revenues this year because people just can't even go to our hotels. EBITDA tanks and our, and our revenues absolutely tank. It doesn't affect our individual share at the moment, at least in the forecast, in our uh, perpetual growth and the multiples, but it definitely shows that in future years, our ability to pay off our debts is really difficult. It's going to be difficult because we aren't making revenues this year. And it gives us, um, it puts us in a tough uh, situation when it comes to liquidity. So let's say we get $10 billion in debt. We can show you that uh, our quick ratios in, in the future go up by a significant amount because it gives us the ability to pay off our debts in the next few years. While though, of course, our EBITDA in the current year is still struggling. But also, let's say if we were to forecast an equity, we would have a lot of uh, liquidity within this year if we were to get an equity bailout. That's how that's the biggest impact on the current year. And now let's say going forward and went to the kind of the next few years, the, one of the most important times is the election this year. And you can see that based off the current incumbent Donald Trump compared to the two top Democratic candidates, you can see that Joe Biden is forecasted to have about a 33% increase compared to Trump's tax rate. And Bernie Sanders is about a third higher than Joe Biden based on what they're trying to fund. And of course, these aren't the direct tax rate set by the government by 21% corporate tax rate. This is based off the current model because Hilton was projected to pay about 29% going forward for the next five years. And I wanted to show that if we start out with Joe Biden, you can see that we're not only paying more taxes, but our EBITDA goes down in the future. And with Bernie Sanders, we're going to pay even more taxes and our valuation is going to go down just because we're going to have a lot less liquidity as well, especially with our quick ratio. Going forward after that, the importance is seeing how individual drivers such as the Airbnb, the minimum wage, and the environmental sustainability plan will impact future years. So if we're going to, if we're going to reset everything, 
Uh, one of the most shocking things is the impact of minimum wage. And we estimated about 25% of, uh, of our expenses would, be, would come from minimum wage employees. You can see just by increasing our minimum wage, it directly impacts our model to where we're able to pay out less and we're making less in our EBITDA. And it definitely and it directly decreases our value overall valuation, and along with that, our, our environmental sustainability plan. You can see that investment in fixed assets that would help us reduce individual water consumption, landfill waste. That directly impacts our ability to pay off debts because we're putting in a lot of uh, the way by the way we're financing it, and then finally. Uh, the final interactive part is the increase of Airbnb's market share. And you can see how that affects our uh, revenues directly by that. Uh, if Airbnb was to take about 25% growth each year over the next four years and possibly become a big player in our market, it's possible that we could lose out on about 500 million by, two, um, by 2024 per year on revenues on each side. So that can be up to 1 billion total. We would think that Hilton is possibly overvalued, at least by the time our 10K came out. They were valued at about $111 per share. And part of this is because coming into the future, a lot of it is their reliance on the minimum wage. We believe that they were just overall overvalued compared to other industry players. And I think the model shows that. And by playing around with the model, you really don't see that it hikes up more than that. Currently, it's listed about upper 60s per share so we believe that the fact that it's kind of between that initial 10k and what it is now it's pretty accurate to what we think would be would happen based off the current market we have a three statement model so we have our income statement showing the individual forecasted drivers and these are able to be adjusted through our model and the interactive part of it i think one of the biggest things to show is that before you adjust the model using any of the future um any of the interactive part, you can see that our cash goes up because if it weren't for the coronavirus, we were for forecasting Hilton to continue being strong and have a lot of opportunities to capitalize on. But factoring in things like Airbnb uh, taking up and also we're going to have less revenues, our cash decreases in the future. And that's why our valuation goes down. Our overall cash flows and our cash flow statement go down significantly when you play around with the model. And going all the way down to the bottom, 2020 was expected to have be a little down compared to previous years when it comes to our cash flow, but it was suspected to stay solid in the years following. And that's why we had such a, a pretty solid forecast for Hilton going forward. How did the uh, collaboration affect you guys? The online limitations affect Not you? too much. Yeah, I mean, there's pretty pretty simple. You know, we already got everybody in a group, then we can share the screen. So. Zoom really helped a lot with that, I would say. Yeah, because especially like going over the model, sharing the screen and being able to explain how the model impacts the PowerPoint. Because I think that was the biggest thing was linking the model to the PowerPoint. Because if we were all able to understand each part of the presentation, that's what matters. So I think like we all try to understand the model and the PowerPoint at the same time. And if you found, if we could find ways to link both, the presentation would flow smoothly because we'll be able to talk about both at the same time. We yeah, just had fun doing it. We we loved this project. So we probably had about thirty different Zoom sessions over the last couple of weeks, making sure that we're on the same page. It was a fun project. I, I, I really enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. Great job, guys. So that is now the part where you stand up and you're really in your pajamas, or is that how that works? <laughs> <laughs> With that, do you have any questions about the model that any of us can ask? I'd like to know what they're capital spending has been like. I think it's actually best to be looking at our cash flow statement for this. In 2017, you had a big year where they sold off a lot of fixed assets. This has to do with that. If you look back at previous financial statements, timeshare properties completely got wiped off the map. I think it was after 2016 on the, on our, on our statements. And we had to go through a bit of the notes and to find that there was a lot of big sellout on 2017 of them just kind of freeing up a lot of their fixed assets. That year specifically, you have a huge increase in our investing activities, but huge decrease in the financing activities. And this impacts the future model in that 2017, 2018 have a lower cash balance, but it allows them to have more flexibility in the future. Did they have depreciation on the income statement or did you have to go find that? 
we had it on the income statement, but we didn't have accumulated depreciation. So our accumulated depreciation specifically, what we did is going into the notes, we pulled the accumulated depreciation they had. And then in the forecast, we, we started calculating it that way because we wanted, we wanted the accuracy and the historical to be correct. So we, pull, we pulled the historical values that way. But in the model following in the forecast, we added the um, historical accumulated depreciation with the income statement uh, depreciation we had for the current year. Really outstanding. It's, I can't imagine a better commercial for this project. Uh, than the work you guys have done. I particularly want to compliment you on the slide deck. Price's Thank coverage you. of the company story was very short and sweet. You know, I thought, man, if he takes me through all the information on this slide. <laughs> <laughs>